Hello and welcome. Have you ever wondered how to capture the texture and shine of an apple? Or maybe what a paper bag would look like with a face? Okay, maybe not the last one. Maybe that's just me. In this video, I'm going to be painting a realistic apple and a paper bag side character. And I'll be using acrylic paint because I need to use it before I lose it. I found these Liquitex Basics paints stuffed in a drawer and they're about two years old, maybe two or three years old. And I'm not sure how long acrylic paint lasts before it gets all gummy or it dries up. Okay, a quick question. Have you ever had acrylic paint that gets all weird? I had a big tube of ultramarine blue acrylic paint and the lid was on tight so it wasn't like it had a loose lid or something but after like two years it got all gummy and i had to throw it away because even if i would add water to it to try to like loosen the pigment it's like it was just a, a gooey mess it was weird anyway let me know if you've ever had acrylic paint that went bad or did something weird because none of my other paints have done that so far it was just that one but it was my oldest tube of paint i think so I kind of thought maybe it just got old. I don't know. I definitely don't want to have to throw it away. So I figured it would be a good idea to use it in my sketchbook. This is an Artica sketchbook. It's an 8x8 and it's a hundred and... What is it? 180 GSM paper. So it's pretty thick paper. Not quite as thick as watercolor paper. But it holds acrylic paint really well, I've found. Anyway. Painting this apple was actually a lot of fun. A lot more fun than I thought it was going to be. I've really been trying to focus on practicing this year with my painting. I usually don't practice that much, which is really weird because anything you expect to do and do well, you need practice. Talking about practice. And it's not a secret. It's not like some hidden gem. But sometimes it's like when you think about practice, you think... This is going to be boring. I just want to do the thing. Maybe I'll just learn along the way. And I won't have to practice. I'll just practice by doing. Which you can totally do. That's literally what I've been doing up until this point. <laughs> and I think it's been working out pretty well for me. The only problem is... I've found that whenever I'm working on a painting and I'm painting something that I've never painted before, I end up spending way more time repainting it and getting all frustrated and making the painting experience not as fun. So, for example, this apple has a round surface. And when you're painting, it's kind of hard to think of the flat paper or canvas that you're painting on as a round surface. But it really helps if you use your brush strokes to paint around the planes of the surface, if that makes sense. So this apple, I could have just filled it in red and used straight up and down strokes to do that. But when you paint in the direction of the curves, it ends up looking way more realistic because your brush strokes show through creating texture and creating the dimension of the apple. And it's something that seems like kind of like, of course, you should paint that way. But I never really thought about painting in the direction that something curves until I started painting round objects while I was practicing. A few videos ago, I painted a ladybug and the wings or the shells that cover up the wings are very round. And I also painted a snail and a snail shell is very round and it has several layers of roundness and it was while I was painting that something clicked and I realized that the more I painted with the surface with the curve the less trouble I was having trying to make it look like a curved surface so I challenge you if you're a painter and maybe you're just starting out or maybe you've been painting for a while pay attention to how you paint what direction you take your brush as you're laying the paint down because you might not even realize that you're not necessarily painting with the flow of whatever it is that you're painting. I hope that made sense.
Now, when I did this paper bag, I did it with the idea of having a lunch sack and whenever you take your lunch, a lot of times you take an apple and so I thought they paired up really well so I figured it would be kind of cute to have an apple and give him like a paper bag friend. It's funny, I've noticed I do this a lot. I have something kind of realistic in my paintings and then some kind of character or something not so realistic. I like to blend the two for some reason. And I kind of made the bag a little bit too small compared to the apple. I think I didn't really plan on the apple being as big as it turned out. <laughs> if I sketched it out ahead of time, I could have avoided this. So then I didn't have enough space to really make the paper bag be as big as a regular lunch bag. But I still think it turned out cute. And even though I didn't really paint it very realistic like the apple, I still think you get that paper bag texture that I was looking for. And I didn't really want it to look as realistic as the apple because it kind of makes the character make a little more sense, in my opinion, especially once I paint the eyes. The eyes are actually like buttons, like buttons have been glued on to it. And the expression that the eyes have looking at the apple, where one of the eyes is smaller than the other one, giving it like a curious or a wondering kind of look. He doesn't have eyebrows, but if you were to lift one eyebrow, like you were looking at something like, what is that? Whatever eyebrow is lifted looks bigger and the other one gets kind of squinted and so it looks smaller. So it kind of gives this like, what the heck is that kind of expression. But anyway, facial expressions are a lot of fun to just kind of play around with on characters. And no lunch bag is complete without writing something on the lunch bag. Usually you write your name. I just wrote lunch upside down because he is technically standing upside down for the way that you use a lunch bag. I also wanted the letters to be imperfect. I didn't want them to look like they were printed on the bag. And so I kind of gave it a Sharpie kind of look. And then to finish him off, I gave him a mouth. And I was a little like, what am I gonna use to do the mouth? But sometimes on the bottoms of bags, they have like weird markings. So I put two X's and some lines and I kind of broke this line to give the illusion of that crease. And I love how this turned out. It was such a helpful practice session. I highly recommend just getting your sketchbook choosing a fruit. It doesn't have to be an apple. It can be anything that you like. And if you're still looking for some inspiration, I have another video that you might want to watch right here. Make sure if you enjoyed this video, you leave a like and I'll see y'all next time.